Okay, guys, we're back. Fasten up your seat belts. I'm going to introduce you to a lady that who has a long history in television, and like I said before, is one of the most well-known actresses in the world, Miss Donna Douglas. You know her better as Ellie Mae Clampett. Donna, thanks for coming and sitting with me tonight and talking. Well, howdy there, Charlie. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing? Just fine. <laughs> I got a bunch of critters around here. That's always good to see. Still like those critters, huh? Yep. Probably the question I'm asked more than anything else is, is if I really love animals and if I can really whistle. Yeah, so, so I love critters. Whistle. <laughs> I okay. might. You, I'm going to put you might, on the spot. I just might cut loose after a while. You just better look out. Listen, I want... Everybody's interested in the Beverly Hillbillies. And tell us how you got started, how you came from Louisiana into the Beverly Hillbillies. Well, I, I never... Like many people, you know, they plan, they train all their lives to be an actress. Well. I never planned to be an actress, you know. I never even thought of it. Probably the only dreams I've had was really having a real good marriage, possibly, and someday, and maybe being a really good softball pitcher. But it's interesting how our lives go, and it's sort of what your life has been, that's kind of what your work is going to be, if you ever think about it. And growing up, I was raised a tomboy. I was the only girl in either family, and uh, it was like I had an older brother and all boy cousins, and I learned to swing on vines and jump off buildings and, you know, football, basketball, all those games. We played all the time. And uh, so I was really getting ready for Jethro long before I ever met him. Whose idea was it to get in the beauty pageants? Was that yours, or did your mother, no, your uh -uh. mother want you to do it? No, never. You know, like, as I said, there again, just out my met this little lady, and she, they were having a contest at home, and. Uh, in fact, I, I had already, I had, when I was about 17 going on 12, you know, I'd never been anywhere. We never went on vacations or anything like that. And uh, when I was just, you know, really a babe, just got out of school, I was in, well, just in high school, I got, uh, I got married, teenage marriage. And of course, uh, in time that didn't work out, but it's, uh, so I get to share a lot with children, young people in churches and, you know, tell them sort of, a little bit about life and, and help them to really realize what responsibility is. But uh, as I said, that was one of my dreams. And, and as of that, that softball play, and they had wanted me to train me. They saw I had potential because I gave a lot of time to pitching that softball. And so they wanted to train me to be a semi-pro softball pitcher. But I didn't feel that was right for me to do because not near as many girls played sports like they do now. And so as I let that go, as I said, just in and just just a baby as far as my thinking and understanding responsibility and everything. Went through the teenage marriage and uh, never hadn't been away. I'd never been anywhere, never been on a vacation, never been traveled, anything, anything like that. And uh, never been anywhere. So I just really didn't understand responsibility. And so after that, after I'd gone through that and everything, then this little lady, uh, there was a little lady had a florist and she said to me, uh, about entering a contest. Well, I only did it because, you know, she was a little friend of mine. I more or less did it for her, not for me. And uh, that was how I entered my first contest. And then she, you know, she got me on another one. But it was really, she had been a pony, and a pony in the Ziegfeld Follies. Hmm. Years and years ago, she's a little tiny lady, and she was crippled at the time. She kind of had a limp when she walked. But she's the person that got me into contests and probably show business of any sort. She. Uh, but she, she the, a pony in the Ziegfeld Follies, they had the show girls, you know, these tall six foot girls, they were very tall, statuesque girls. But the ponies was the little ones and the little tiny ones in front that would do the kicks and everything. Yeah. And uh, so she was a pony. She had been a pony in New York. So she had that flair. Uh, from the beauty contest, uh, I had not done, you know, as I said, as far as showbiz, didn't know nothing. I hadn't had any training like many people. I hadn't had any training, acting, singing, dancing, none of that. You know, none of that. Only softball, one thing I'd ever done. And, um, but one day I went to my folks and I told them, I said, Mom and Daddy, I, I, I just, I was trying to get my life together because, you know, I'd been through divorce. And trying to get my life together and I was trying to take responsibility because by this time I had a little boy and, uh, well, as a baby then. And so I uh, told my folks, I said, um, I was trying to take responsibility, and I said, I was try I knew I had to make a living because back then that's what the main thing was. Today you learn more that it's 
you know, the wisdom of being with a child and just many, many things. They've, uh, people know so much more about that kind of things. But back then it was a matter that, you know, of trying to make a living for the child. And my brother's wife had died several years before. So uh, I, I just was trying, to, I, I was trying to get some kind of work. I didn't have any training, didn't have any background on anything, didn't know nothing, never been anywhere. So one day I knew New York was a place up there on the map and I knew Hollywood was over there. Farthest north I'd been was Freeport, Louisiana one time by this time. Got on a plane and went to New Orleans, got as far as New Orleans. I always say my folks knew less than I did or they'd have never let me go. So I got to New Orleans and uh, the man from the airline said to me, if you change your reservation, you can get in an hour early. So instead of landing in New York City where I was going, I landed in Newark, New Jersey. I didn't know they had two airports in New York. We just had one at home. So you make your decisions in your life from the information that you have within you, you know, so. So you were a teenage girl alone in New York? Well, I'll tell you. I wasn't afraid, though, because I made a commitment with my life. When, when I got there, it was like I was, trying to, I was trying to decide, you know, I didn't know anybody. You know, I didn't know people. I didn't have an agent or anything like that. So, but I, I made a commitment with my life. I made to God, just told God. I didn't know a lot of scriptures. I didn't know a lot of the Bible. I didn't know much. I love Jesus, but I didn't know, I really didn't know the word of God. But I made a commitment. I said, if my folks trusted me enough to let me go, then I was going to be worthy of their trust. And the other thing was that I believe with all my heart that if I do the best that I could do, I believe God would take care of me. And that was how I went to New York. And, of course, when I did that, then everything in the world came my way. I mean, I had men want to keep me in penthouse apartments and give me money and put me on, take me on yachts and just everything, make me successful, you know, the whole thing. But they had little strings attached. And so as I let those things go, well, then God met me where I was. I always say God wants to see if what you say with your mouth you mean with your heart. And as I let all those things go, and what could I do? Well, I could smile, but don't ask me to say nothing. I couldn't have said a word. I couldn't have talked for nothing because I, I, you know, I didn't, I just, I, I didn't know. I, I couldn't have done that. I was just totally, you know, I was so shy and afraid and everything. And so, but God met me where I was and I could do walk-ons on shows and things like that, you know, and, and little jobs. I got little jobs, never had to say a word. Just smile. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to hear about the Steve Allen show and some of the good times that were had in New York. So we'll be right back after a break. It's not just what I get to be. It's not just who I get to meet. Or where I get to go. Just forget about being sick. Remembering how to be a kid. That anything is possible. Leaving worry on a doorstep. Making plans for the future. I'm still making plans for the future. What is a hero? Are heroes born or are they made? In after school programs, your kids will uncover hidden strengths, discover they have the power to change their future and find the hero inside themselves. Let us know you on after-school programs in your area. Call 1-800-USA-LEARN. After-school programs, helping kids find the hero within. And we're back. We have a very special edition of Racing Around Carolina tonight. We're here in my shop talking to Miss Donna Douglas about her career in television. Yeah, well, it, and I think where we left off was about me being in New York and I made my commitment, made that little commitment to God to do, to be the best me I could be, you know, to do the best that I could do and the other things, if my folks had trusted me enough to let me go, I was going to be worthy of their trust. And uh, as I said, all the things started coming away and as I let them go, then God met me where I was. I always say, he wants to see what you say with your mouth, you mean with your heart. And it was like, 
as I let all those things go, well, what could I do? I told you I didn't have any talent that I was aware of. I'd never had any training in show business or, you know, sing and dance or nothing like that. But I could smile. I'd been in a few contests at home, so I could smile. I knew how to do that, and I wasn't afraid to do that, just as long as they didn't ask me to say nothing. And so I would walk out on shows and take a little bundle of letters and smile and step back, you know, to the host on a show. And that way I was on a lot of different shows. I think you had, earlier you had mentioned about the possibility of being on the Steve Allen show. I was on Steve Allen, and I picked Perry Como, and various shows I just did little, you know, I don't know if I was on the Perry Como show or if the Hillbillies knocked him off later. It was one of the two. But I, I know it was a Steve Allen, and I did a lot of different, you know, different little shows like Ed that. Sullivan? That was later. I did that. That Well, I wasn't in New York with about uh, eight months altogether. I think I was in New York about eight months. But I got all these jobs commercial, you know, doing commercials. I got a toothpaste commercial. Never said nothing. Never had to say nothing. And uh, then I got... Uh, I was interviewed, it was, we called them elbow grabbers back then, and so it was a matter that I was going to have the opportunity to, to, to be interviewed for this show, that they would use the girl, this, you know, the same girl that she would be like an elbow grabber for every week or every day. I forgot if it was a show like Concentration. And uh, so I had to be interviewed, and the man says, well, he says, I'm going to have to ask you some questions. And I said, yes, sir, because I thought he was a family man and everything, and I got so excited. And so he said, well, he said, would you be willing to go out in a bathing suit before those people? Well, Lord, I'd just come from home, and I'd heard those wild stories about those girls and the big cities and all that, because I'd never been anywhere. i never, you know, we'd never been on a vacation. Or the only vacation we'd ever gone on was out on a river fishing or dead and in with set trot lines, you know, just out in the country. And so... I'd never been anywhere. This was just a one-time trip. And so, I, boy, I said, I had to find out more information. I had to get more information. I put that little old guard way up, and I said, well, bottom line was, I said, you mean you won't go out there and just show myself before men or do something like that? And the man said, well, what difference will make you got on a bathing suit? And I said, well, I've been in a contest back home, but you want me to just show myself with no purpose. I said, no, sir, I won't do that. And he smiled and said, okay. Because, see, I'd made that commitment to God, and that was my security. Otherwise, I'd have been so afraid. So, and then so he said, well, okay. He said, would you be willing to go out with a sponsor? Would that man be married? And he said, well, what difference does it make you just going to dinner or whatever? And I said, no, sir, I wouldn't do that. And so he said, okay, and on and on he asked me these little questions, and my little old heart was just broken. I was so hurt because I thought he was a family man. And so I finally, I just, he asked me these questions, and he kind of smiled, and I just finally stood up, his big old tears sat on my eyes, and I said, mister, I said, I don't want your job. I said, your job's not that important to me. And I walked out. I got the job where you're willing to compromise, you abort your opportunities. I got the job because they had had an expose of quiz shows, and they had to be so careful of the girl they picked. But you see, you don't always know that. So I always tell people, character is what's on the inside of you. That's what, that's what you're made of. That's your foundation. Reputation is what you can make other people think of you. But character is what you can stand on, you can hold fast to, you can hold on to that. And so um, it was like, I didn't know all the, you know, the problems that they had had and how careful they had to be before. And most of the time in our lives, we don't know that either. We don't know, you know, all the things. But if, as you really make your decisions, I found this out for me. And take it for what it's worth. But I found out that, that if you're willing to be true to what you know within yourself, if you're willing to stand on, on, on what's true to you, then God honors that. And it was like, I couldn't keep that job too long because uh, pretty soon I have, uh, I met some people and they want to, uh, uh, this producer, he wants to send me to New York. I mean, to, from New York to California to do a screen test in a movie. And uh, so it's like, I, I had to be interviewed by the lady in New York, but then she would send me to California to, be, to, to do the screen test. And before I left New York though, I was introduced they picked me to be Miss Byline. I was put on national, but at that time, 
Miss Byline was on, uh, I think it was the New York Mirror, one of the biggest newspapers in New York. And they had this huge picture of me put on the cover of the New York Mirror. So you don't have to have your life all together before God can do something with you and make your life special. It's amazing what can be done, you know. So uh, I couldn't keep that job. As I said, I couldn't keep the job too long. And now I have the opportunity to do, uh, to go to Hollywood. She wants to send me to Hollywood. And, and also, now they put me, I'm put on the Ed Sullivan Show. That's what, and along with the Beatles, that's the show the Beatles were introduced on. And me, you know, I say you don't have to have it all together before God can do something with your life. He has plans. Many plans of man's mind, but it's God's purpose for him that will stand. So it's amazing the things where my life is gone. And you went to California to do a screen test for a movie. Uh-huh. And how, did the movies come first or the tryout for the Beverly Hillbillies? No, I first, when I first went to California, uh, I went under a movie contract. I went there to do a screen test. I did the screen test. And I did one part, but it was real awkward for me. And then uh, after I had done one little screen test, and it was really, I was stiff, then I did another one, and they, they signed me to a contract. And then uh, they wanted to, uh, to put me, give me the lead in the movie. And, and I was at that time offered a part, and they wanted to put me in and build me into a movie star. And they offered me a part very similar to Ellie, but I couldn't do it. You see, the scripture says, let patience have its perfect work. And see, my timing, the timing wasn't right for me yet. Because if I had I taken that and tried to do a lead in the movie, I'd only been in acting school one week by now about. And so I couldn't have handled it. But uh, as I let that go, you know, and took a small part, then in time, when I went up on a Beverly Hillbillies, it's like, I knew everything about that little old girl, that little hillbilly girl, and it was like, it was just, I was homegrown for that. And you were perfect for the part. We're gonna take another break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. It is about balancing our choices between the gray of the concrete jungle and the stunning beauty of the real one, between a stoic facade of granite and the fury of the canyon. It's why there's Earthshare, the simple way to find balance. Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups under one umbrella. Support Earthshare, support them all. Earthshare, please ask your employer about workplace giving. To learn more, visit our website. And we're back and we're talking with Miss Donna Douglas. Donna, this is a harder racing country, I guess you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, North Carolina's famous for stock car racing. Oh, I know. Like, years ago, I met Richard Petty. I, in fact, I did the Darlington 500. I was at the Darlington 500. They brought me in. Did you years have no truck? No, I didn't come in in the truck. Oh, okay. But I, you see, Paul and Jethro drives the truck, not me. <laughs> what? You got some pretty fancy cars around here. My goodness. Yeah, we, uh... That's one I drive from time to time. We uh, we play with some old race cars and uh, a few of my friends and myself, and uh, my it's a lot word. of fun. Well, that is my word. Is that how the is that how the race? I mean, I've seen them. You know, I've seen Jeff and a few of these guys, Andretti, and I. You know, you see the racers. Sometimes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, I've seen Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he does commercials too, don't he? Sometimes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I've seen him on commercials, but. Is that how they're made inside so that, that, you know, you see, but you see them just running around, you know, just yeah, running around? Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's basically the same as, so, a, as a Winston Cup car is now. They, have, they all have a steel cage inside to protect the driver in case of a wreck and a good, good safe seat and the safety belts and uh, yeah. a lot of safety equipment on them. Yeah, you, you know, you can't see that. You, know, you often wonder because they go so fast, my word. Yeah, and people don't realize that uh, a race car is just... A, it's made with a guy's two hands. It's a, it's like a work of art. It's, you can't go buy it. A guy yeah. has to have a love for it and to build something like yeah. that. But, uh, well, the, uh, the the thing I'm happy to see is how protected they are. Yeah. You know, that's amazing to me. Yeah, it's a very safe sport. Um, I hear you're a golf fan too. Oh, I I like I like Tiger. I like to watch Tiger, and I I know a few of them. You know, I've wa I've watched some. We watch them a lot of times on TV. Now and then you might get to go and see them. Years ago, I uh, 
I, I would think I was in Greensboro or something, like that, and the, that was for... Um, Greater Greensboro Open. Yeah, but uh, Arnold Palmer was there, you know, and I think Jack Nicholas was there. Different ones were there. But, uh, and then I've, you know, I've got to see some of them since. It's, it's fun to, uh, to go and watch them play. That's a lot of skill. Most things are, you know, people don't realize, just like they say acting or, or race, racing or golf, you know, that looks so easy, but it's a lot of work and a lot of dedication, discipline has gone into accomplishing what these people accomplish. Well, the same's true for your career and what you've done. And I want to get back to the Beverly Hillbillies. Okay. Tell me about trying out for the part and how it all got started and just because everyone's just fascinated by your show, which I saw in London back in December. It was on at one o'clock in the morning in London. Oh, we, well, at one time or the other, we've been practically all around the world. Uh, Beverly Hillbillies, I went up, uh, they probably interviewed over 500 girls for the part of Ellie. You know, it was just a, a lot of people. Uh, when I went up for it, they, they had already picked all the hillbillies and everything. Uh, Granny, they hadn't really wanted her, and she finally went to them and she said, would you test me for the part of Granny? And they said, well, you wouldn't be right for the part you're too young. And she said, well, I've been doing Granny since I was 25 years old, now test me. Of course, because they, they hadn't been able to find the right one, of course, she couldn't have found a better Granny. Buddy Epson, he said, I was talking to him, oh, a few months ago, maybe a little longer. I'd seen him. I'd spent some time with him at home, and we were doing an interview together. And uh, they said, he talked about how he got the job. He was commenting on how he had gotten the job. And he said, well, he said, they had asked, they said, now, how did these guys were sitting around, producers, whatnot, saying, how do you make a successful show? And so the guys, the producers, whoever they were saying, well, we know because this is at the time of Jim Arness and Chuck Connors and all these tall guys. He says, one thing we know to get the lead guy, you know, the, the heart of the, the group. And they said, he's got to be tall. So Buddy said the reason he got that job is he's tall. I think it was a little more to it than that with him. But anyway, Jethro, we, Jethro's got his own story, you know. Oh, uh, let me remind you, because this may show. Uh, the 22nd of September, TV Land is going to be doing a, uh, it's a, about the Beverly Hillbillies, but uh, Buddy Epson, it's about honoring Buddy Epson or something like that. So it's on the 22nd, it's gonna be, because they've asked us, to, uh, they've just asked us now about what some of our special shows is or our comments. So it, it's something honoring Buddy. I don't know any more about it, but it'll be the September the 22nd on TV Land. So don't forget, okay. But anyway, you asked me how I got the part. Yeah. Well, I went up, they, I had just done a little small part because I was just beginning to do small things. I was getting one-liners, two-liners, and just beginning to get a little better part. And so these, this producer told me they were going to have like an open call for girls. And so I went up. And that day, this Paul Henning creative producer said, do you reckon you'll be able to, to do this part? I read my little part that I had to do. You reckon you'll be able to do this part? Well, I thought my heart was going to pop wide open. All I could do was bow my head up and down because, you see, it was, God's timing was right now. Now I knew. I was just so excited. And so I'm going home, and I was in an automobile accident. I stopped at the service station to pick up this guy. And uh, so he was going to change oil on my car and uh, was just a pretty well-known actor. Rams in the back of my car driving a big old Bentley, and I'm in this little Fiat. And uh, so I was put in the hospital for 17 days. And so all I could think of, oh, dear God, if I got a chance to that part, just please let me get out of this hospital so I got a chance. And so the day I got out of the hospital, they said, you got to test in three days because by this time they had Paul and Granny and Jethro already picked. And so um, I started talk. Well, coming from Baton Rouge, everybody talks just about like that. And they said, cut, you don't talk no fast that out of half hour. I want anybody to get on that camera but you. So I started talking faster. And they had a nanny goat tied up over there and said, you reckon you can milk that goat? Well, y'all, I never milked a goat in my life. But it was quick seeing where them old cows was back home. I said, sure, I can milk that goat. And boy, I got that bucket and went to milking that goat. And that was my first critter. Probably worked with over 500 different kinds in the course of the nine years. Our show hit number one the first, the second week hit number one, national television. We held number one's place 
for two solid years. We never moved. We may have dropped to second place once or twice in two years. And then I was told when I was interviewed by someone, uh, uh, like a radio DJ or someone like that, and he said, you hovered on first, second, or third place for five years. Wow. So we had amazing success. And no other show had ever had that kind of success. Did you ever think that to this day that the show would still be as popular as it is? No, you, you, I didn't, and I, and I think I've heard the others say likewise. They never dreamed of the kind of success we had. I don't think anybody could. I mean, they talk about superstars today, but it's like, my goodness, I never had a press agent. And, and you know, they got email and all this other stuff and all the things that they do today. We didn't, they talk about superstars, my God. We would have been so, had so many supers in front of our name. But um, it's amazing, you know, how your career goes. We've only got a couple of minutes left, but what are you doing these days? What, what's brought you back to North Carolina today? Oh, well, I'm going to do the Western Film Fair, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be over at the Hilton. And uh, Wayne Shore does that. It's, but I'm going to be there, I think, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and, and, then, and then on Sunday, I'm going to speak at two churches. I'm going to be at, the, I think, the United the St. John's United Methodist and then the Christ Baptist. I do all kinds, you know. You, I speak at all different kinds of churches, you know. I'm just whatever. Work a lot with young people. Uh, I've got my little coloring book and a little audio tape for, for children. I have that also. And tapes. I've done some country singing, gospel singing. Um, do, and I do a lot of different things. Work a lot with charities. Work with a television station down in Florida, raising money to build a huge television, Christian television station. Uh, I just do all, any, do parades, interviews, any number of things, talk, got a lot of projects going, you know. Like buzzing, that. just buzzing, staying busy. Well, it's been an honor to have you this morning. And, uh, oh, thank I'm you. I'm glad that you took time to, to sit and talk to me today. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Well, you are a special guy, Charlie. <laughs> it's been a joy to be with you. Thank you, Donna. I hope we can do it again. Well, it sure has been nice business, all y'all. Now, y'all be sure and stay tuned now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> We'll see you next time.